In this chapter, I'm going to show you how to import your own textures and create a material, uh, at least something a little bit more complicated than the example green one we made before. Uh, so let's get started. We'll reuse the same package, so make sure you have that selected uh, uh, in the packages list on the left. Um, now I've prepped three textures that I actually exported out of Unreal earlier, uh, just to use as examples, but I'll assume for this you've got your own. So I'm going to click on Import. Uh, and here we go. I've got a diffuse map, which is the color texture, a normal map, and then a specular map, which is uh, for the reflectivity. So let's import the diffuse texture first. Um, for diffuse and a specular, all of these default settings are going to be fine. So I'm just going to hit OK. And there we go. Now I'll import the specular. Uh, and I could have selected both of those and imported them at the same time um, and used the OK to All button to import them all, as long as they've all got the same settings. All right, so that's in. And then I'm going to import the normal map. Um, and for this one, we do need to change one setting, and that's this compression settings here. Uh, TC default is the default, and that's what's appropriate for, well, diffuse and specular maps. Uh, but we need to change it if we're going to do a normal map. So now that that's set up, I'm going to hit OK. And there we go. Our three textures are in. Now, I want to show you quickly what would happen uh, if you forgot to set up that normal map property and then uh, how to fix up everything so that it's used properly. So I'm going to hit Import again. I'm going to re-import the same normal map, but I'm going to give it a different name. I'll put underscore bad at the end. And we're going to leave the compression settings at TC default. So the first thing you'll notice is that it's a very different color than the one that we imported properly. So that's your first clue that there's something wrong with the normal map. Uh, now if you forget about this, what's going to happen is that the lighting is just going to be slightly off on your mesh. Everything will appear uh, as if the light was coming from 90 degrees, or it'll be a little bit darker. Uh, it's kind of hard to describe exactly what it looks like, but it definitely looks wrong. So I'm going to open that up. Now, the best way to see what properties we need to change is to look at the one that's set up correctly, and then see what's in bold, because we know that bold means it's different than the default, and then we can copy those over. So the first one I see is compression settings. So let's set that to TC normal map. Next is LOD group, texture group, uh, world normal map. So we'll set that. And then come the really critical ones. This sRGB setting needs to be turned off. And when I uncheck that, you'll notice that that's when the color changes. And then we need to set the unpack min. If you roll that out, you can see it sets a negative one, negative one, negative one. So I'm going to fill in those same settings. Negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. And there we go. Now the normal maps both look the same, and uh, the lighting will be proper if we do use this second normal map on anything. All right, so I'm going to quickly delete out this bad normal map, because we don't need it anymore. Now let's create uh, a little bit more interesting material. Um, I'm going to right click again and choose New Material. Make sure I've got the right package selected, and let's call this uh, Machinery Mat. All right, so we saw before we can create uh, a color node by grabbing one of the options from uh, the list on the right here. But what we really want first is to be able to bring in these textures. So uh, what I'm going to do, go back to the content browser. I'm going to select my diffuse texture. That's the one that ends with the underscore D. Go back to the material editor. Um, now, if you remember, uh, the shortcuts we've been using so far typically is you hold a letter down and then you click to place something, like hold S and click to do a static mesh, or L and click to place a light. Uh, what we can do here is hold T and click to place a texture. So I'm going to do that right now. And as long as I had my texture selected in the content browser, uh, it's going to automatically fill in into this texture sample here. 
Um, if I had forgotten to do that, for instance, if I had the material selected and I hold T and click, well, obviously I can delete it and try again, but let me show you how to fill it in properly. Um, I'm going to go back to the content browser, select the texture, come back, and then uh, in the properties at the bottom of the window, you can see there's a slot for the texture here. Um, and we saw this before, there's a little green arrow uh, which you can use to fill in basically whatever you've got selected in the content browser. So if I click on that, now I've got that texture filling in the texture node. So anyway, let's hook this up just like we did before with a green color. Uh, I'm going to connect the black dot directly to diffuse. Uh, and there we go. Now we've got this texture applied to the sphere. Um, if you look at the top left corner of the interface, there's a couple different primitives you can preview this on. So I can switch it to a cube. That may be a little bit easier to see what's going on. So let's bring in those other textures and hook them up. Um, I'm going to go back, choose, uh, I guess let's do the specular next. That's the one with the underscore S. Hold T and click, and then plug that into specular. And you can see there's a little tiny bit of a reflection coming off of the object now. Um, if I disconnect it, you, you can disconnect a node by right-clicking on it, and then the first option is break link, or you can hold the Alt key and just click on either of the nodes, and that'll get rid of it too. So you can see there's a little bit of a glossiness that appears when I plug that into Specular. Uh, and then let's plug in the normal map. That one should be obvious, but it's the one that ends with underscore n. So I'm going to hold T and click, plug it into normal, and there we go. There's a lot more obvious surface detail uh, now that we got the normal map in there. Um, one other cool thing you can do in the viewport, if you hold down the L key, L for light, you can move the light source around. So that can be a really good way to preview your specularity and the intensity of your normal map uh, to see how they're reacting with the surface. So that's pretty good for starters. Um, let's click on the green check mark to apply these changes. And let's see, all right, so here's our material. We can see it updated. Um, I'm going to do exactly the thing I said not to do before, and I'm going to apply this material to a BSP wall, even though it's a very obviously a prop material. So Alt click. Um, and maybe that wasn't the best wall because there's no lighting on it, but uh, you can see the material is working. Maybe I'll temporarily place a light there. And now if I move it around, you can see the surface has a lot of depth and a lot of cool lighting detail in that specular highlight. So let's do one more thing to this material to make it a little bit more interesting. Um, say we want that specular highlight to be brighter. Well, what could we do? We can't exactly go into Photoshop and paint the texture to be brighter because it's already pretty much fully filling the full uh, luminosity range. So what we can do is multiply it by a number inside of Unreal to make it brighter. And this is where the node graph starts to really get powerful. Um, what I can do is uh, browse through the list. I can find there's a section called Math, uh, and then under Math is a node called Multiply. Or you can use the shortcut. You can probably guess at this point. Hold M and click in the viewport, and now we've got a Multiply. Uh, so what is a multiply do, it takes two inputs and it multiplies them together and spits them out on the left hand side. So we know the texture is going to be one of our inputs, so I'm going to plug my specular texture into A, and then for our second input we need some sort of number so we can tell how powerful the specular highlight is. So I'm going to scroll up to the top and under constants one of the options is constant, which means you know, it's just a number. I'm going to plug it in and it doesn't change dynamically or anything like that. Um, so I could drag one of these out into the viewport, or the shortcut for a constant is hold the number 1 and click, because it's sort of a box that holds a single number. Now if I plug that into the B channel of the multiply, and I plug the results in the multiply into specular, what we're going to see is the specular highlight is going to go away completely, because we're multiplying by 0, and 0 is black. So what I can do now I can go into the properties down at the bottom, type in the number 1, and now our specular highlight has come back just as bright as it was before, because anything times 1 is what it started out as. 
Uh, but I can start cranking up this n number. 2, 4, 10, 100. Usually I like to go really crazy, uh, pick a really big number when I'm trying out a new function just to make sure it's working. So definitely sure that that specular highlight is working at this point. So now I can tune it back down to something that looks a little bit more appropriate, maybe a value of 2 or, or 3 or 4 or something like that. But uh, that's the basics of how the material editor works. Um, different nodes have inputs on the left-hand side, uh, and they ultimately feed into different inputs on our material box here. Uh, normal map, specular, and diffuse are the main ones we work with. Uh, and then you've got joiner nodes, like this multiply here, that uh, combine different inputs in different and interesting ways. Um, so what I recommend there's a lot more to learn about the material editor. Obviously, there's about 400 different node types that we haven't looked at here. Um, but at this point, probably the best thing to do is poke around a little bit inside of the packages, um, see what materials you can find that are already set up, and see if you can figure out how they're put together. Uh, you can learn a ton just by dissecting what's already in the level and working. Um, one other handy tool when uh, dissecting an existing material uh, if you're trying to figure out what something does, detach everything else. So if I want to know just what this combination of three nodes is, I can detach the normal map, detach the diffuse, and now all I'm left with is the results of that specular reflection. Um, so yeah, give that a try. I'm going to reconnect this real quick. Definitely remember, if you are detaching stuff, don't hit that green check mark. Uh, if, if you've messed things up. So I'll hit the green check mark. Uh, all right, everything is still looking good. And I'll save my package. And there we have it. It's a pretty fully functioning material. So at this point, you've probably noticed me mention a couple times uh, a material instance. Um, now, the way that differs from a material is um, Picture a legal document. I guess that's the best example I can come up with. Um, it's got most of the vocabulary filled in. You know, it explains who's liable and whatnot. And then there's just little blanks you can fill in for your name and the date and the amount of money that somebody has to pay. You can think of that as a material instance. Um, a material can get really complicated. You can have this huge node graph. Uh, but really, all you want to do sometimes is plug in a couple different textures, and everything else can stay the same. So that's what a material instance lets you do. Um, and Unreal ships with a couple really cool material instances that have a ton of really good functionality that uh, you can take advantage of without having to understand how the entire material is put together. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, if you go into the engine folder rather than UT game, there's a package called engine MI shaders. That's material instance shaders. A um, bunch of different ones for lots of different use cases. Uh, there are a bunch of water ones in here, which can be pretty cool. Um, but all of these are meant to be overridden and have your own textures plugged in and have your own specular brightness controls and that sort of thing plugged in. Uh, so the one let's take a look at is this one right here, uh, MES Fong Opaque Master 01. Uh, and what's really critical about that is Fong is the lighting model. And opaque means it's solid. It's not uh, transparent or masked or anything. Um, so rambled a bit. Let's actually uh, get in and start using it. Um, I'm going to right click on it and then choose Create New Material Instance Constant. Now, for the package, uh, let's select the package that we've already been working with. Uh, it should be in the list alphabetical, or you could just type it in, custom asset test 01. Um, and let's name it Metal Machinery Inst. And give it a second, and you should see a new interface pop up, which is the Material Instance Editor. Uh, now, real quick, I'm going to show you what the actual material looks like that we're working with. Like I said, it's kind of like a legal document. There's tons and tons and tons of detail in here, uh, and we're only going to override a couple specific inputs. You can see how slow the interface is loading it up. So much 
bigger and scarier than the one we just created, but there's a lot of really good, um, really good looking stuff that we can do with this. So let's go back to our instance. And I'm going to show you just a couple of the parameters and how to get at them. I'm going to show you how to recreate the diffuse, the normal, and the specular, uh, and then maybe one or two other controls. And then I'll let you dig around, uh, play with the settings a little bit more um, if this is something that you're interested in. So let's filter by all again so we've got our textures back. So first, first thing I want to do is plug in our uh, diffuse texture and our normal map texture. So that's under texture parameter values. So uh, grab our diffuse texture. Now the way this works, you'll recognize the little green arrow. We can use that to plug in our texture, but we need to check the check mark on the left hand side here in order to override whatever the default is. So I've done that. And now let's grab the normal map, uh, plug it in and check the check mark. Now notice I'm plugging this in on diffuse one and normal one. This material does allow for blending between two different uh, textures. Um, so for example, you could have a big uh, rusty section that gets applied on top of this. But we're not going to use that functionality for right now. So uh, it looks pretty much like we had before. You can tell the normal map is working. I can hold the L key and drag around to move the light source. So we've definitely got our normal and our diffuse. So let's plug in the specular. Now, you may notice that there aren't any slots for a specular texture. Uh, that's because that's an option in this material. You can turn it on or you can turn it off. And anything that's an option is under this category, static switch parameters. A lot of cool stuff in here. Probably most of it won't make any sense to you at first. Um, but the one we want is called use specular textures. Uh, click on the left side to override it, and then click the little box to turn it on. All right, so now we have a specular highlight in. I'm going to grab my specular texture and override specular 01. You'll notice this, these options just appeared. So I'll plug that in. And now there's ever so slight of a specular highlight off the surface. Now, just like we created, uh, there's a parameter for controlling the intensity of the specular highlight. Um, now this is um, under vector parameter values, uh, which typically means a color. So you can see here there's an option for specular 01 color. And there's an interesting little shorthand in Unreal. If you roll out that property, um, you've got red, green, blue, alpha. Um, so I can set green and blue to zero, and then I've got a red specular highlight, which is kind of neat. But if I set this back to one, I can use my alpha channel as intensity. Uh, again, it's kind of a shorthand that they built into this material. So I can drag that number bigger, and I can see my specular highlight get much brighter off of the surface. So effectively, what we've done, uh, I think I had a value of two or three in there. But essentially, now this looks exactly like our other material did that we created by scratch. We didn't even need to open the material editor and deal with the node graph interface. Obviously, there's a lot to dig through here, um, but this is where the power of this system really uh, starts to come forth. So uh, as we saw under the static switches, lots of options we can turn on. Uh, let's take this one as an example. Use Fresnel rim light. What that means is, um, actually, I'm going to switch to a sphere preview mesh. Uh, what that means is when you're looking at the mesh edge on, it's going to have like a, a rim light built into it. So let's check the check mark on the left to override it, and then check the check mark on the right to turn it on. And then even with the default values, you can see it gets a little bit brighter at the edge. And now a new option has shown up under my vector parameters for an L color. Uh, and our alpha is effectively an intensity, so I can set that to 10 or 1,000 to make it really obvious. Uh, I can give it a color, so the red I can make twice as bright. And that can be a really cool way to sort of give a little bit more emphasis to your object in the world. Um, or certain types of objects, like a cloth or wood, 
tend to have a little bit of rim lighting built in due to the the, the fuzziness or the graininess uh, that you see at an edge. So um, that's where this uh, material instance can be really powerful is once you start to understand what a couple of these different options do, uh, it's a really easy way to get that functionality without having to figure out how to write it all yourself. So uh, that's probably a lot to absorb for now. Um, if that makes sense to you, dig into it a little bit more. See if you can find more material instances that are uh, already set up in the packages and see what options they turn on. Um, one note of caution is uh, the more stuff you turn on here, the more expensive the shader gets and the worse it's going to be for performance. Um, you can get a general sense of how expensive it is by uh, the text at the top of the window here. You can see this is, uh, at the bottom it says texture samplers, 7 of 11. Um, that's basically a limit to how many textures you can use. And the higher this number is, the 7, the more expensive it'll be. Uh, and then the number of instructions, 69 instructions. If we compare that to the material we created ourselves, this one was only 46 instructions or 51 under different lighting situations. So uh, by turning on Fresnel and by using this shader, it's 20% more expensive. And that can really easily skyrocket if you turn on more stuff. Um, so be careful with it. But if you've got some really special case objects that really just really need to shine, this can be a great way to set it up without having to know a lot of how to use the material editor.